in the last stream, we began this brand new Cave Factory mod pack, and we got, by the looks of it, about halfway through the first quest line, the basic automation quest line in the quest book here, we managed to get a basic Tinker's Construct setup with the pot builder and the Tinker's Station, allowing us to make uh, this stone pickaxe that we have since upgraded with redstone to make it faster and a diamond to make it uh, higher in durability and also able to mine harder materials. We also began work on a very basic create system as well. Uh, over at the back here, we have a windmill bearing with some uh, windmill blades attached to a large assortment of cogwheels going from big to small to big to small to big to small, allowing us to accelerate the speed coming off of this windmill bearing, uh, thus making these crushing wheels here that bit faster. And then combined with the chutes and the chest, we have kind of automated the process of turning things like cobblestone into gravel. And then if we move the gravel back up, we can turn gravel into sand. Now, one thing I didn't mention in the last stream was the idea of kinetic stress impact. You'll see uh, on the little tooltip that's appeared on the right-hand side of the screen that there is a kinetic stat. I believe this only appears if you're wearing the engineer's goggles. Normally, uh, it would not appear. But you can see that right now, this is currently using um, 128 SUs, or you know, kinetic stress impact units. And that's for each of these crushing wheels. And if we head back over to the windmill bearing, uh, this is producing, or can hold, or has a kinetic stress capacity of 512 SUs. So uh, while we have kind of effectively used this large and small cogwheel system to increase the speed of the wheels, this is not something that you can do infinitely. If we tried to make this even faster, the number of SUs being used by each crushing wheel would go up. And if you go over the number of SUs that you can support with your power source, then the system will stop working. Uh, for example, if I were to very quickly grab some shaft, and if we were to do something like this, which we can do just as soon as we get rid of like this wheel here. So basically what we're doing here is we're cutting out all of this acceleration, and we're just going straight from the windmill forward and then into the gearboxes. And you'll see right now, because we have uh, reduced the speed, the number of SUs being used by this uh, crushing wheel here has been reduced significantly. It's now only using eight as opposed to the 128 it was using previously. Of course, the trade-off now is that if we were to grab some cobblestone and place that cobblestone into this oak chest, it will take significantly longer to process all of that cobblestone into gravel, and then again, significantly longer to process all of that gravel into sand. So just a heads up there, you can't accelerate things infinitely, at least not without upgrading your power source on the back end. Uh, but for now, that is completely fine because we do have um, enough SUs or enough uh, kinetic stress capacity. And uh, can I get this down right? I can if I do that. Uh, but we do have enough kinetic stress capacity to support both of these at 128 SUs. Uh, that means in total they're using 256, which is still only half of what our windmills can support. But going forward in today's stream, as we add more things to the network, especially if we try and add them um, kind of at the fast end of the network, uh, we might see ourselves running up against the kinetic stress capacity sooner rather than later. But uh, either way, now that that is out of the way. As you can see, between streams, I have spent a little bit of time cleaning things up and organizing things ever so slightly, um, including moving these uh, wheels here. Uh, at the end of the last stream, they were one block to the left, which means they weren't perfectly centered and it was driving me insane. So uh, between streams, I have gone ahead and rectified that. I've also moved all of our chests and our tinker stuff into the wall here. I've moved our furnaces, added a few more storage drawers for things like wood because we do have quite a large amount of that and we can get it fairly easily, of course, from the cobblestone. Um, I've also moved our berries over to here and done a little bit of shifting uh, to get quite a few of those so that hopefully throughout the course of today's stream, we don't have to spend too much time over here shifting to get food. And then finally, what I've also done is I've kind of dug this uh, little tunnel around the back of our zombie spawner area. Uh, the reason for that is just to give us a space uh, to excavate if we need to get more resources. I didn't really want to start digging around uh, some of these other walls because I think this center room uh, looks quite nice at the moment. I'm quite happy with the shape. Uh, of course, that might change in the future. But uh, for now, if we want more resources, we can do that back here without kind of ruining the aesthetic of the main room. The plan for today's stream, at least initially, I think is going to be to start work towards this seared heater down here. This is not 
the full Tinker Smell Tree. That comes a lot later on in this quest line. The reason for that is that in order to power a regular Tinker Smell Tree, you do require lava, and lava is something that as of right now, we don't have the ability to get, but hopefully by the end of today's stream, we will be able to get both lava and water and be able to use those to get ourselves to the nether, get some nether quartz, and uh, once we get over here, we're basically done with this uh, first chapter in the quest book but essentially over here we have the road to better tools quest and to complete this we need to get one seared cobblestone which we already have and one seared stone so in this pack you can get seared stone by smelting seared cobblestone and as luck would have it you do get seared cobblestone uh, by just breaking regular stone it's one of the random resources that you can get uh, you'll see here we do also have quite a bit of andesite ready to go uh, because i do want to do a bit more work on the create mod we're going to have to if we're going to get our first bucket of water and as you will have seen if you watched the last stream the create mod does use a fair amount of andesite and a fair amount of iron so that is that quest complete next up we have the bench saw a regular vanilla minecraft bench saw requiring three blocks of stone which we do have as well as one iron ingot which we do not have uh, for now we can go ahead and throw one in there and in fact i feel like we might as well throw a fair bit of iron into here i don't necessarily know although actually before i do that can i drop the iron ore into the crushing wheels i totally can and if i do that um, I get one crushed iron ore, and then I have a 30% chance of getting a, a second iron ore. I think that's what that means. I don't think it's a chance of getting three. Twitch chat is telling me I'm incorrect here. It looks like you actually do have a chance of getting three. You're guaranteed to get one crushed iron ore, and then you have a 30% chance of getting three crushed iron ore, like an extra two. And then uh, if you want to, and one thing we might look at doing in the future, you can take this one step further. Instead of just smelting the crushed iron ore into an iron ingot, you can actually wash the iron ore using a fan and some water into 10 iron nuggets with a chance, a 50% chance of getting an extra five iron nuggets. For now though, we will just take this and drop it into our furnace because for now uh, we actually don't have the water or the fan to be able to, to wash with. Once we have the bench saw, the quest after that is to get one seared brick. So seared brick is made by smelting grout and grout is made from sand, gravel, and clay. Now at the moment, I believe we have a fair bit of sand. We do. We also have a fair bit of gravel, but we don't really have that much clay. The reason for that is that clay is not that common. Right now, the only way we're getting clay is by crushing gravel. And there's only a 5% chance that we get it when we crush gravel. So I think what I'm probably going to want to do here is take quite a bit of cobblestone, like a few stacks of cobblestone, and get that slowly but surely crushing down into gravel. Once we have all that crushed into gravel, we can run it through again into, uh, into sand, and in doing so, we should hopefully get a decent amount of clay as a byproduct. I'm not quite sure how much seared brick we're going to need. For now, of course, we can make, um, at the very least, two grout. Oh, sorry, four grout. You make it in sets of two, and then we can smelt that up into uh, four seared bricks. But I have a feeling that if we're going to get the seared heater, the seared melter, and the seared faucet, we're going to need quite a lot more than, uh, than just four seared bricks, although we do get anywhere between four and 16 seared bricks um, as a result of this quest, but that's not useful, chat, because we need different seared bricks for this, right? So chat is telling me that the stone cutter that we're about to make here can actually be used if we uh, claim some of these quest rewards. And uh, by the way, we didn't claim all of our quest rewards yesterday. The uh, kelp quest here does give us the gluttony charm as a quest reward. And the uh, wheat here gives us a cutting board as a quest reward. Now, uh, in this uh, mod, this is uh, FTB Quests is the name of the mod that adds this quest book. You can click this button in the top right to claim all rewards. So instead of clicking on each quest and clicking the reward, you can just click claim all rewards and it will give you all of the rewards. Nice. Uh, we got 16. Seared brick, which seems incredibly lucky given that our range was 4 to 16, which I'm very happy about. And uh, chat is telling me that if we were to go ahead and drop this in here, we can craft that back. Oh, I see. It's the seared stone that can be turned straight into seared brick. You get four at a time. That is significantly easier, especially given that we have so much seared stone ready to go. So we can just put this in like that, select seared brick, and then boom, we've got well over a stack of seared stone ready to go that is so much easier than doing all of this stuff with the, with sand gravel and clay this is still fine i think we are still going to need quite a bit of, of sand and gravel so i will even put this gravel back in there and, uh, and keep working towards more gravel and sand for us to use in the future for now though we can do something like this to get a seared heater from there we are going to need some glass if we're going to get the seared melter 
Uh, we need five in order to make the gauge. So uh, let's quickly throw some of our sand into here, like so. Uh, while we wait for that, we can go ahead and make the faucets. You do get two at a time there. And I think we're also probably going to want to get both a basin and a casting table. These will both become, uh, the uses for these will both become apparent momentarily. And actually one of those is required uh, for a quest here. Chat is pointing out that now that we have this cutting board, we can actually craft our sweet berries into a fruit salad. So each normal sweet berry only gives you one chicken leg worth of hunger and then like a half chicken leg worth of saturation, whereas the fruit salad here gives you almost five chicken legs worth of hunger and 11 chicken legs worth of saturation. And I'm fairly certain that the cutting board doesn't have durability. And so essentially, this is just a, a way of converting our sweet berries into even better free food. On top of that, the gluttony charm here allows the user to instantly eat food. So if I were to drop this and we were to try and eat this fruit salad, it's not slow, but it's not particularly quick. Whereas if I have the gluttony charm on me, uh, and if you click this button up here above your uh, player's head or to the right of your head slot, we can open up the charms menu and then right down at the bottom, we have two charm slots, which we can place our gluttony charm into. So it doesn't take up any inventory space. And now that we're wearing that, if we try and eat the fruit salad, we eat it instantly so we don't have to waste any time going forward chomping down on food which is fantastic over here we have all of the glass required so if we do one at uh, one two three four five with one two three four seared stone that gets us a seared ingot gauge and then from there if we combine that with five seared brick we get the seared melter and at that point that is this quest complete as a reward we get four copper ore it does say here, this is a demo version of the smeltery. Place the heater below the melter, insert coal into the melter, and ores slash metals into the melter to melt them. Uh, you can use gold to create casts, which will allow you to shape metal how you want. So essentially, we take our heater, we take our melter. Let's, for now, go ahead and put this down, I guess, anywhere. We'll probably end up moving this once we get an actual smeltery up and running. But if we do something like this with the melter on top, and the heater beneath it, we can put fuel into the bottom slot there. I'm not actually sure if wood works. Can I put just planks in there? It looks like I can. And also it looks like you could do that from in here as well. You don't have to open this. Oh no, it does say no fuel found there. So I think you might have to use regular coal and or charcoal for this. Uh, thankfully we do have uh, a fairly decent amount of tiny coal and we also have over a stack and a half of, uh, of regular coal as well. One thing we haven't done on our pickaxe yet that we definitely could do if we wanted to uh, is we could add a look to our pickaxe. So right now when we break this, we get the regular amount of coal, which there was one. But uh, if we were to add lapis to our pickaxe, much like the way we added redstone in the last stream, we can actually give our pickaxe look, which is similar to vanilla Minecraft's fortune. Um, and at which point we would start getting more coal, redstone, diamonds, lapis every time we, we place and break these blocks. Chat is also pointing out the very sensible alternative to that, which is that we could just put our coal ore uh, through the crushing wheel here, and that would also get us uh, extra coal per ore. It does still say no fuel found there, so maybe wood does work. I'm actually not entirely certain. Uh, let us give it a test. If we get some gold, which we're going to use to make casts, and I will take a bit of wood just in case, let's drop the gold in. That does start to burn. If I put that in, maybe the wood will burn as well. Uh, either way, that gets us four ingots. Uh, so the way it works in this kind of small smeltery is I believe you get 1.3 ingots worth of material for every ore you put in. So for example, gold ore there, uh, we put in three gold ore, three multiplied by 1.3 is four. So normally if you put gold ore into a regular full-sized smeltery, uh, you get two ingots worth. Uh, but as you can see on the tooltip there, it says in smeltery, two ingots. In melter, you get one ingot and three nuggets, which is effectively 1.3 ingots worth. So three ore gets us four ingots. From there, if we place down our casting basin, uh, and I believe you can place this down anywhere around the, uh, the seared heater. For now, we'll put it right about there. We then want to grab a seared faucet, which we're going to put directly onto the melter, like so. And at that point, we can then pull the gold out into the seared casting table. Now, if we were to just do that with nothing in the seared casting table, uh, we would get, I believe, a blank cast. This one right here, a blank gold cast, which on its own is kind of useless. What we want to do instead is make casts like the pickaxe head gold cast um, or the ingot gold cast. It looks like we're going to get the ingot gold cast as a reward. So to make the pickaxe head gold cast, all we have to do is place any pickaxe head into the seared casting table and then pour two buckets of, or two ingots, sorry, of molten gold over the top of it. So over in the pot builder, 
Let's put in some cobblestone and let's put in a blank pattern like so. We will craft up a new stone pickaxe head. I believe we will lose this pickaxe head. So any pickaxe head you put in and then pull over with uh, molten gold, you will lose. So don't do this with anything valuable. But uh, once we right click on the seared faucet, the gold is pulled out. You'll see now, oh, it only used one ingot of gold. Interesting. I thought it was going to use two. Either way, we now have a pickaxe cast. And the benefit of this is that this can be used as many times as we like. And we can use it to make better pickaxe heads for our pickaxe. Right now, this has a cobblestone head. But for example, if we wanted to upgrade that to an iron head, what we could do is we could take some iron ore, place it in the melter, melt that down into molten iron, and then pull that molten iron out into the ingot cast to get an iron pickaxe head, which we could then add to our current stone pickaxe to improve its durability, its mining speed, and its attack damage. So I don't necessarily know if we do want to put an iron pickaxe head onto our pickaxe. There might be other materials uh, that are a better choice for us. You know, we have things like copper, zinc, uh, silver, nickel, etc., gold. We could make a pickaxe head out of those materials uh, and put that on our pickaxe. But for the sake of completing the quest here, uh, the final quest in this kind of Tinker's side quest line is to make the iron pickaxe head. And as I just mentioned mere seconds ago, if we uh, go ahead and grab an iron ingot, we can throw that in over here. Although let me check real quick, iron pickaxe head. Does it require two ingots worth? It does. So we need two ingots worth of iron in order to make the iron pickaxe head, um, which is a little unfortunate because it means that if we put two in here, I feel like I have to put three in. If I don't put three in, we're gonna end up with an awkward amount of iron. We're gonna end up with a few nuggets left in the system, which is not really what we want. Um, of course, we can, now that we have this ingot gold cast, which we got as the reward for completing the previous quest, um, we can now pull our resources out in ingot form. So this gold here, we can just right click and we can pull out um, an ingot worth of gold. So one downside to the uh, melter is it looks like you can't have more than one like resource in the melter. So I've had to pull the gold out here in order for the iron to actually melt. Uh, but now the iron is melted, we can throw down the pickaxe head cast, right click the faucet, wait for it to cool and boom we have an iron pickaxe head and if we wanted to we could take that over uh, to our tinkers station and if we were to put in our pickaxe on the right with the pickaxe head on the left you'll see now that there is the option to add that to the pickaxe uh, increasing the durability uh, increasing the mining speed up from 10 to 12 and increasing the attack damage from three to four um, i don't know if i want to do this there are a few downsides to doing this um one of them as i mentioned earlier there could be a better material for us to use for example um, if we look at the copper pickaxe head here uh, this one has a higher mining speed than iron this one has a mining speed of 6.5 uh, versus iron's six so we could mine faster with the copper head uh, the iron one does have more durability but i think for now uh, we already have quite a high durability so i prefer the speed uh, to be able to excavate large areas faster um, but the downside of upgrading this at all is that right now we can repair our pickaxe fairly easily using cobblestone so when its durability gets low we can put cobblestone in like this and repair it as soon as we get rid of the cobblestone pickaxe head and replace it with either an iron or a copper or zinc or silver head we then have to repair our pickaxe with iron or copper or zinc or silver whatever material we choose to make the head out of which makes it significantly more expensive to repair the pickaxe in the future so for the time being i might just stick with the cobblestone head i do also want to point out there is a slight mistake in the quest book here this last quest says you can't exchange parts of your tool in the tinker station without creating whole new tools this is like the opposite of true um, I believe this T was not meant to be here at the end of, of Kant. Uh, you can exchange parts of your tool in the Tinker Station without creating whole new tools. That's like the whole benefit of, uh, of Tinker's tools. So for example, right here, uh, we just got a cobalt small axe head. Cobalt being a very good uh, material for making uh, tools out of very fast. So uh, with our stone hatchet, we can upgrade that to cobalt. And now we have a nice fast cobalt axe head. I think that's fine. Again, that does mean if I wanted to upgrade, if I want to repair this in the future, I would have to get cobalt to do it which we don't actually have access to just yet. But if it really becomes a problem, it's really not too difficult for us to make a new cobblestone pickaxe. It'll take, you know, maybe uh, 90 seconds at most. So for now, I think this is probably well worth having. So now that that section of the quest book is done, let us pivot back over, I think, a little bit into blood magic. So we got our blood altar down at the end of the last stream. Also, real quick, uh, let me dump out some of the stuff in my inventory here. Um, I have tried to organize these a little bit. Uh, we have kind of all of our farming and, and food stuff over in this chest. And for now, I will put the cutting board in there. And then we have like all of our ores and stones and whatnot in here. Um, although, as you can see, it is uh, filling up quite quickly. I think that's fine one thing we could do if we wanted to is we could upgrade this iron chest even further 
Previously, we got a wood to iron chest upgrade, which allowed us to convert a regular chest into an iron chest. You can take this even further uh, and get an iron to gold chest upgrade, which allows us to upgrade the current chest that we have to be even bigger. I think that's probably going to be worth investing in. And then uh, you can also take it one step further than that and get a gold to diamond chest upgrade, which makes it even bigger still. And then finally, there's also a diamond to crystal chest upgrade. Uh, this one doesn't actually make the chest any bigger, uh, but does make the chest transparent, if that's something that you're, you're into. Uh, but either way, we do have our blood altar here. We also got a dagger of sacrifice and a sacrificial knife. The sacrificial knife allowing us to use our own life to increase the amount of LP in the blood altar, and then the dagger of sacrifice allowing us to use the lives of these zombies to increase the amount of LP in our blood altar. Now, the first quest after Bloody Hell here is the Weak Blood Orb quest. This is used for crafting and to get blood into your blood network by placing it in the altar. So to make this, uh, we need one diamond in the blood altar with 2,000 life points, which should not be that difficult for us to do. We do have 1,444 already in. 1,920, so one more zombie, or just one more right click with our dagger here, is going to take us up past that 2,000 mark, at which point we can take a diamond, throw it in, and then hopefully rather quickly, uh, that should get crafted up into the weak blood orb. You can see uh, in the top left there, it's working through it and uh, is slowly but surely turning that diamond into the weak blood orb. Uh, we can, of course, still kill more zombies while we wait for that to happen. Uh, over here, how are we doing on gold? We're doing very well indeed. Let's go and throw that into uh, one of these furnaces here. And there we go. We have a weak blood orb. Nice. And as a reward for that quest, we actually get five sugar and five clocks, which may seem like an odd reward. However, um, if we look at uh, the spawner here, the spawner is actually upgradable. So uh, I will kill this guy real quick. Uh, hopefully when he gets a bit closer to the altar. There we go. Uh, this spawner is upgradable. And the quest does say here, uh, use the rewards from this quest to upgrade the spawner, right click on it with them in hand. So I think if I press U, while hovering over the sugar, we can find out what these do. Uh, there is a spawner modification tab from the Apotheosis mod, and you can see right here that adding sugar to your spawner decreases the minimum spawn delay. So right now, there's a minimum amount of time between each mob spawn. By adding sugar to the spawner, or by adding more uh, sugar to the spawner, we decrease the amount of time between each mob spawn, thus getting more mobs faster. The clock, if we go over to the same tab, decreases the maximum spawn delay. So it's essentially the same thing. The, the sugar decreases the minimum and the clock decreases the maximum. So basically both work uh, to decrease the amount of spawn delay. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five. Now, if we turn this back on, we should hopefully see zombies coming in a bit faster. Also, did we get a we got two slime balls? Look at that. Nice. And some string. Oh, I completely forgot, of course, because in... This quest over here, if you leave Rotten Flesh on the ground, you will randomly get one of these items after 30 seconds. I thought that was odd. How do we get slime from a, from a zombie? But it makes sense because we just left the Rotten Flesh on the ground. We could do the same thing with this piece here. If we just drop it after 30 seconds, that will be transformed into something new. And there we go. We got a spider eye. Nice. But either way, the next quest along here. Uh, there are actually two quests. One is to make uh, the tier 2 altar. It says you will need to upgrade the altar to at least tier 3 in order to get lava. Uh, you can preview what the structure looks like in the Sanguine Sentium? This guy right here. So in this book, there is a section for the Blood Altar, and I believe if we uh, click through to Blood Altar and we click through the book, this is what a tier 2 altar looks like. It is a standard Blood Altar with 8 runes around the base. Uh, so the underneath block is empty, but then the rest of these are runes. Uh, then a tier 3 altar is a bit more elaborate. Uh, you go down yet further and you add even more runes uh, with some stone brick. And then uh, in our case, we're going to use glowstone because I don't think we have access uh, to the uh, the lanterns just yet. And then there's also a tier four blood altar, which gets even bigger and a tier five blood altar, which is absolutely massive. Um, although as the book does say, there is no content for the tier five altar just yet. Um, however, all of those altars require blank runes. So to make blank runes, we craft stone. Any stone will do. We're probably just going to use regular stone, but uh, seven stone crafted with one blood orb and one blank slate. I should point out the blood orb does not get used in this craft, so you don't have to use like one diamond per blank rune. This is a reusable item. The blank slate is made in the blood altar with one stone. Again, any stone will do, and 1,000 life points. So to complete this quest, we are going to need eight blank runes um, and eight blank slates. Eight blank slates is going to require eight stone. Uh, right now, we have over a stack of stone, so we'll go ahead and take some of that. And basically, all we need to do here is turn our spawner back on, 
and slowly but surely craft up uh, eight blank slits. I do think it's well worth using the sacrificial knife as well as the dagger of sacrifice because we have um, essentially an infinite amount of fruit salad and the fruit salad gives us so much saturation. It's actually fairly easy for us to regenerate our health. And so I think using our health as a way of uh, accelerating the speed at which we get blank runes here um, is well worth it. And there we go, not too long later, we now have eight blank slates. So back over here, we can put those at the top, our weak blood orb underneath that. We can then grab our stone, do something like this, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and we should have just enough stone here for seven, although that is not correct because we need eight. Thankfully, we can substitute in some andesite there. Boom, we get our eighth blank rune. And so now we could do two things. We could move the blood altar up by one and then put the runes beneath it. Alternatively, uh, I believe we can also just dig out the ring around the bottom of the blood altar. This is a little janky because of course it means that some of the runes are kind of under the wall there and it's gonna look a little weird. Uh, we probably will end up moving this blood altar sooner rather than later. It's probably not gonna stay uh, in its current location for very long. But uh, if we look now in the top left, you'll see that it does say tier two underneath the uh, the bar that shows us how much LP is in the altar. So we now officially have a tier two altar and so we can actually craft tier two recipes. Um, also, we have another quest complete, which is gonna give us fermented spider eyes, gassed tears, prismarine crystals, more sugar, more clocks. So the sugar and clocks, we, uh, we know, we can shift right click those onto our spawner. That's gonna reduce the spawn delay. And then we can also, I guess, rather quickly try and get rid of these zombies here. Beautiful. The fermented spider eye increases the spawn count. So it increases how many zombies spawn uh, each time a zombie is spawned. So we get two, three, four, etc. Uh, depending on how many is the maximum. Uh, the guest here increases the maximum nearby entities. So by default, uh, the spawner will spawn zombies continually until there are so many entities in the area. So if there are already like 12 zombies around, it will stop spawning them. Whereas if you add guest tiers, that will increase that number. So it'll allow, you know, 13, 15, 20, however many um, are allowed. I don't know the exact number, but basically this allows more zombies to be in the area before it stops spawning in more of them, uh, which can be quite laggy if you do it uh, in excess, but for us should be fine. And then finally, Prismarine Crystals uh, increase the required player range. So of course we have to be somewhat close uh, to the spawner in order for these zombies to spawn. Uh, with the Prismarine Crystals, that range is increased. And so that, you know, when we're stood over here, they might keep spawning in, uh, even though we're not quite as close as we normally would be. So we'll do one, two, three, four. Uh, I'm kind of actually a little hesitant to use the gas tiers here. I don't know how easy it is to get gas tiers in this pack, but I'm, I'm wondering if we need them for other recipes, if it's worth keeping these, just so we don't have to go and kill guests in the future. I'll use like two of these. I'm going to keep a hold of the other ones, and then we'll add all the prismarine crystals as well. Um, it's quite possible that keeping these is unnecessary, but um, I want to err on the side of caution. Uh, also, our gold should be done. It is. And so if we craft up eight gold with one iron ingot, we get the iron to gold chest upgrade. And if we right click that onto our iron chest, that increases the size yet further and makes it nice and big. So we can continue to add even more junk to this chest. So the next quest along in the straight line here is for the tier three altar. For the tier three altar, uh, we need 20 blank runes and four glowstone. Uh, as the quest states, glowstone dust can be obtained by crushing torches. So we need four blocks of glowstone, which is 16 glowstone dust. Uh, every time you crush a torch, you get a 25% chance of getting glowstone dust. So we need uh, approximately 64 torches uh, because with a 25% chance, that means that 64 torches will turn into approximately uh, 16 glowstone, which would then get us four blocks of glowstone. So how much coal do we have? We do have 64, uh, even though we only need 16. Uh, Wood-wise, we have infinite wood, so we can go ahead and just grab a bunch of that and craft up a bunch of sticks. And then if we take 16 sticks and 16 coal, we get a stack of torches, which we can then go ahead and throw up into that chest. And slowly but surely, we should get, hopefully, approximately 16 glowstone. Maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less, depending on how lucky we get. While we wait for those, there are other runes that we can make to alter our altar or to change our altar might be a better way of, of saying that uh, so the first one here is the speed rune uh, we can replace the blank runes with these to make our altar faster so right now we have eight blank runes in our altar if you put a speed rune into the altar so like if we take away one of these blank runes and replace it with a speed rune the altar will work faster so right now when we place stone in for example it takes a little while maybe 30 40 seconds for it to transform that piece of stone into a blank slate 
the more speed runes you add, the faster it will do that process. There's then the Rune of Sacrifice. Uh, this one will make sacrifices worth more. I think there are two copies of this sacrifice. Yeah, there's the Rune of Sacrifice and there's the Rune of Self-Sacrifice. So the Rune of Sacrifice gives you more LP for every zombie kill. So every time you kill a mob with the Dagger of Sacrifice, the more runes of sacrifice you have, the more life points you get per kill. Alternatively, the Rune of Self-Sacrifice does the same thing, but for your own sacrifice. You know, so when we do this with our knife, if we had a bunch of runes of self-sacrifice, we would get more LP for every rune of self-sacrifice we had. For us, given how many zombies there are here, and given the, the frequency with which they seem to be spawning in now, thanks to our many spawner upgrades, it seems like it's probably going to be worth it. And actually, we're almost full on the, uh, the blood altar here. Um, it seems like it's probably going to be worth it for us to, uh, to go with the regular runes of sacrifice. Speaking of the altar being full, uh, the last one here that we can't make just yet, but we are going to be able to make once we have a tier 3 altar, is the Rune of Capacity. And as the name would suggest, that increases the number of life points you can store in the Blood Altar. Right now we can store up to 10,000 millibuckets. If we put down a couple of runes of capacity, that will increase the amount that can be stored. I think it's 1,000 millibuckets per rune, uh, but I could be wrong on that. I do believe it tells us in the, uh, the Blood Magic book here. If we go to Blood Altars and Blood Runes, there is the Rune of Capacity. Um, oh, so it's an additive plus 20% per rune. So yeah, you get an extra 2,000 because 20% of 10,000 is 2,000. So for every one that you add, you get an extra uh, 2,000 because it's additive, not multiplicative. Uh, so 2,000 for every rune that you add. Uh, if we look at the speed rune, the speed rune gives you an additive 20%. And then uh, I assume that the rune of sacrifice is, yeah, similar. It's an extra 10% additively per rune as well. Anyway, let's go check on our glowstone. We got 20, so we did get lucky there, which is very nice indeed. We'll go ahead and craft four blocks of glowstone. And then now, chat, all we need to do is get 20 more blank runes. That is going to require quite a bit of stone. And so before I start making blank slates, I should probably also uh, start smelting up just a bunch of cobblestone over here. In fact, it might even be worth getting a few more smelteries to try and make this even faster. Okay, so I've thrown down uh, two more furnaces, and these are all working to, uh, to smelt some stone. Uh, I do think it's probably going to be worth us looking into making at least one, if not maybe a few, speed runes. Not only do we need to do them to complete the quest, but also I just think they're going to be fairly useful in general because everyone that we add is going to make it even quicker for us to get subsequent runes because we can make these blank slates even faster. So for every two blank slates we make now, we can upgrade one rune into a speed rune. It does also require some sugar cane. Uh, at the moment, we do have 11 sugar cane, but unfortunately we don't have a way of getting any more sugar cane because we actually don't have any water and therefore can't grow any more sugar cane at the moment. Um, however, one thing I do want to get done as soon as we're done with Blood Magic here is I do want to start working on this quest line that gets us two water using creates and cacti. For now, though, we should be able to upgrade our first rune to a speed rune and drop that down in here, making our Blood Altar just a little bit faster. And given that we've got four more sugar cane here, I think I will try and upgrade uh, two more of these to speed runes. And then at that point, I think I'll focus on trying to get the 20 blank runes required uh, to make the tier three altar. And boom, there is our third speed rune. One thing that the Twitch chat has pointed out to me that I had forgotten about is that uh, in newer versions of Blood Magic, until you have a tier three altar, you can only put the upgraded runes in the non-corner blocks of the altar. So you can't put them in the corners. Uh, the book here does say, the runes in the cardinal directions can be upgraded, but the corner runes cannot act as upgrades until tier three. So as you can see right here, these four runes are the ones that you can upgrade. Uh, the corner ones have to remain blank. Well, you, you could replace them, but they won't do anything um, other than be blank. Even if you put a speed rune here, it won't do anything until your altar is tier three. Just something to bear in mind. And so until you get to tier three, uh, you can only have a maximum of four upgraded runes. Uh, right now we have three upgraded runes. And so now I think all I'm going to do is continue to kill zombies and turn stone into blank runes until we have 20 blank slates, at which point we can then craft up the 20 blank runes required to make the tier three altar. And there we go, 20 blank slates later. We can now grab all of this stone that we've been cooking up and we should hopefully be able to do the exact same thing we did previously, crafting all of those blank slates down into runes. And there we go, that is the tier three quest complete. And as a reward, we get a block of gold, we get five sugar and we get five more clocks. I believe the block of gold there is going to be used to upgrade our blood orb. 
because the uh, weak blood op here is one diamond in a tier one altar. Then the next tier of blood op is the apprentice blood op. This is a block of redstone with 5,000 LP in a tier two altar. And then to get the magician's blood op, you need uh, 25,000 LP with a, a block of gold in a tier three altar. So I assume that's what that's for, even though we could have got a block of gold on our own. Either way, uh, let us once again, uh, for now, temporarily turn off the spawner. And then once we've cleared out the, uh, the riffraff, this is a compressed zombie. I actually don't know. So normally if you kill a compressed zombie, it explodes into nine zombies. If I kill this with the Dagger of Sacrifice, I don't know if it's going to explode or not. It didn't. So I think in that scenario, it might have been worth it to try and kill the zombie with a regular sword and then kill the nine zombies that came out of that with the dagger in order to get even more zombies. Not that it's a huge problem because we are getting zombies fairly fast anyway, but if you wanted to be uh, hyper efficient, uh, the better way was to, to not do what I did just there. So now we reach a, a conundrum and that conundrum is that uh, if we want to upgrade this altar, we're probably, and by probably, I mean definitely going to have to move it because right now it's in an awkward spot for building the tier three variant, right? We can't really put this multi-block structure in the current location. So I've been talking with the Twitch chat about ways that we can do this. And I think the best way for us to set this up is going to be to use vector plates these are essentially like conveyor belts. Um, as you can see from the tooltip, these push mobs and entities in the direction they are pointing. So what I'm thinking we do is we fill in this area here with vector plates that push the zombies to one centralized location, let's say right about here. We can then have those zombies fall down like this, and we can build like a shaft so they stay in this tunnel and fall down and land just on top of our tier three or tier four or tier five altar at that point then we can just kill them with the dagger and we will get the lp without having to uh, to really worry about it uh, it also has the added benefit of moving the zombies away from the spawner thus hopefully allowing the zombie spawner to continue to spawn more zombies uh, thus getting us more lp uh, the only trouble with this is that the vector plates do require sugar and right now whilst we do have sugar as i mentioned a minute ago we only have five because we can't grow more of it until we get water now, if we wanted to, we could get uh, some granite. You know, we could smelt up a bunch of our granite cobblestone, get a bunch of granite, get a bunch of dirt using the blood altar like we did in the last stream, and then just drop that on the floor to try and get more sugar. But if we're going to progress on, we do need to get water because we need water to get to the nether. Uh, we also need water in order to get like unlimited cobblestone, unlimited stone, all that kind of stuff. And so we are going to have to do this. I feel like now is as good a time as any. So to get water, we have to first start all the way down here with the mechanical press. It says to make a mixer, we will need some iron plates. Mechanical presses make it possible. Uh, this is nice and easy. It's one block of iron, two cog wheels, one andesite casing, and one andesite alloy. Uh, right now, let me take out all of the create stuff that we have here, just in case we already have, uh, because we already have a lot of this stuff ready to go. Uh, we are definitely going to need some more andesite alloy, and we're also definitely going to need some more iron as well. So let's get that smelting up over here. So boom, block of iron, and boom, mechanical press. Nice. I believe the way this works, if we were to come over here, uh, maybe we could just put it down on this. We totally can. And then if we were to drop, let's say, an iron ingot underneath that, it should, slowly but surely, turn that iron ingot into an iron plate. Nice. So now that we have that, we do get five iron ingots as a reward. Uh, we now need to make a depot or depot or depot. Uh, to make this, we need uh, one andesite casing and a one andesite alloy. That seems easy enough. The andesite alloy, we could of course make a fair bit of now if we just craft down some of these iron nuggets and once again do something like this. Perfect. And then as for the andesite casing, uh, it is just some more wood, both in log and plank form. Boom. And boom. There's our depot. Depot. From there, we get uh, eight more andesite casing as a reward, which is fantastic. The next quest along is for the mechanical mixer. It says, remember that you can hold W with a cursor to get the, uh, the information. We've seen that before. So uh, the mechanical mixer is, again, fairly simple. Two more cog wheels, another andesite alloy, another andesite casing, and this time we need a whisk. The whisk is made with five iron plates and two andesite alloy. So it looks like we are going to need yet more iron we already have one iron plate i do believe that we can drop four at once and i think it will make all four of them into plates 
Never mind. It looks like it's going to do those one at a time. Which is completely fine. Albeit, <laughs> maybe a little bit slower than I would like. While we're waiting for that, let's go get some more iron ore. And let's run that through our crushing wheels here. Because it looks like we are going to need even more iron than what we currently have. Boom. There is our whisk. And boom. There is our mechanical mixer. Nice. Uh, as a reward, we get even more cog wheels. We're kind of overloaded on uh, on cog right now, chat, but that's fine. And then uh, the final quest before the water quest is for the basin. Uh, this simply requires five andesite alloy. And as of right now, we only have three andesite alloy. Uh, thankfully, we do have yet more andesite and yet more iron nuggets. So boom. And uh, space. Boom. Nice. So I think with the mixer, can I do this? I can. Can I do this? Do I have to put this like in the floor like that? Maybe? Again, uh, I'm asking the question as if I can't look the answer up myself, chat, which I totally can. Uh, mixer. Let's just press W over this thing and let's have a look how it works. So processing an, item, uh, processing an item with the mixer. With the mixer and the basin, some craft recipes can be automated. Yeah, so it looks like it just goes one block down. And then, much like with the press, I'm assuming as soon as you put something in there that can be mixed, it will go down and begin doing the mixing. For example, we get two cactus there, or two cacti. Uh, in order to make water, we can simply put cactus into the basin, and that will get us 250 millibuckets. So if I put one cacti... Oh, okay, so I have to drop the cactus? You can't right-click that in? Interesting. Uh, also, chat is correct in that... Uh, Unlike the mechanical press and the crushing wheels, the mechanical gear, uh, the mechanical mixer here uh, has this cog wheel on its side. And so much like with the mechanical craft, as we saw before, uh, we actually have to put a wheel down, not like that. We have to put a wheel down, uh, kind of pointing downwards at it. So uh, something like this is required um, and we need to get power to that. That should be fine. I think we can do that um, with a, a small array of gearboxes. And uh, we do have both horizontal and vertical gearboxes. I think up until now we've just used uh, we've just used the regular gearboxes, these ones here and here. However, there are vertical ones, and you can actually craft a regular one into a vertical one. And so all we would have to do, I think, is is place one gearbox here. That's made it horizontal again. And then now we might need like another gearbox here and here to bring that down. Uh, that is going to cause problems over here because that's going to, if we put a gearbox there, it's going to change the rotation of that wheel. So what I might do is I might put one like here and then bring it down. We can always move the mechanical mixer. It doesn't need to stay where it currently is. In fact, and I also should be using my wrench here, if we really wanted to, we could take this, place this beneath it, and then despite it being ultra janky, we can then put the mixer next to this, like that, and, and then put the basin under that, like this. And then we drop our cactus in, if we're close enough, and if we're high enough up. Also, I need to Hold on, I might need to take out some of the ores there that have, that have filled in the gaps. Let me put away some of this uh, junk that's filling up our inventory. Uh, also, I'm going to get rid of this, this quest book here. Like, we just don't need this, like, at all. It just takes up space. I'm just going to get rid of that real quick. So we can right-click to empty out what's already in here, which is good. And then if I try and drop in some cactus, that totally works. And we should hopefully, maybe possibly see that start to make water oh speed requirement it appears that this mechanical mixer is not rotating with enough speed interesting so it does actually require more speed than it's currently receiving okay let's try reorganize this and see if we can't get a bit more speed onto it while i look at making this faster what i am going to do because we do need uh, four cactus in or four cacti in order to get um in order to get one bucket of water, and right now we have exactly four, one thing I am going to do is start growing more cactus. Uh, thankfully, we do have the best mod ever made installed, that being the Snad mod. Uh, for those who do not know, this is a mod that adds exactly one block and one block alone, and that block is Snad. And Snad is sand, but it grows things like cactus and sugarcane faster. So for now, we'll do something 
like this. We'll just drop these down again. Not a permanent location, but hopefully these will start to grow whilst I work over here on trying to make uh, our mechanical mixer work a little bit faster. Okay, so a little while later, and we've basically added another small little acceleration section after the mechanical press. So the, the shaft comes out of the mechanical press, goes to a big wheel, then a small wheel, then a big wheel, then to the vertical gearbox, down to this kind of vertical cog wheel, and then the mixer is now spinning. So I believe, finally, if we drop down the basin like that, and we can go ahead and fill in the rest of this floor here, I'm hopeful that now, if we go and get some cactus, we might see this work. It totally does, look at that. And we got 250 millibuckets of water. So again, I do wanna make sure we try and keep, you know, as much cactus as we can so we can grow it faster. Um, but we should be able to hopefully now get our first bucket of water. Um, I do also assume that we are gonna have to make an actual regular old bucket. So three iron ingots are going to be needed here. Thankfully, Isaac of the past did start uh, crushing up the iron ore so we can start smelting that over in here. And there we go, one bucket of water. Nice. So, we do have that. As a reward, we get a, uh, a tank null, which can, I assume, hold water, maybe in some way, shape, or form, or maybe we can place it down. I'm actually not entirely sure how the how the tank null works. We can come back to that one uh, in the future. Of course, um, we could look at getting an unlimited water source if we had two of these, but for now, um, I think what we should be able to do fairly easily is take our sand, make some snad. We'll take, I guess, four. And then if we take four of our sugarcane, we can go ahead and drop that down as well. Uh, like for now, we can just do it like this. Again, very temporary location for our sugarcane growth. Um, unfortunately, I don't think that we can shift to make the sugarcane grow faster, much like we couldn't shift to make the cactus grow faster, but um, it should grow faster by default uh, just by the virtue of it being on snad. And so hopefully uh, we should start to get some sugarcane uh, nice and quickly from this. And then once we have that sugarcane, we can then take it and use it to make vector plates, which we can then use to move our zombies to a certain location that we can then funnel down onto our blood altar, which is then going to allow us uh, to more easily generate LP in the future and also move one step further towards this quest here for the bucket of lava. So our sugarcane is slowly but surely getting there. One of them here has, uh, has grown. And somebody in the Twitch chat has pointed out that we can, in fact, crush our sugar can. Running it through the crushing wheel setup does get double the amount of sugar. We get guaranteed two. We have a 10% chance to get a, a third sugar as well. So we're just putting this in here. He's going to get us four sugar, uh, if not more. We didn't get lucky that time, but that's fine. We got four there. Um, and I think we only need maybe six sugar because we only need, I think, like 17 vector plates to fill in. Uh, this zombie area here so it really shouldn't take us too too long um, i'll leave these here to grow uh, while we wait for this to grow though i do want to start digging out the space where we're going to put our new blood altar and to do that we're gonna have to do quite a bit of stone mining and as we do more stone mining our inventory slowly but surely fills up with all of the junk you know the diorite the cobblestone the zinc the seared cobblestone uh, and one quest that we have not yet completed is uh, the quest called what to do with all this junk uh, this quest allows us to craft up the dank one uh, dank storage is like a backpack with large storage capabilities create one to store all the junk you get from mining you can also upgrade it to get more slots and more storage capabilities uh, in every slot so to make this it is quite simply eight cobblestone with one barrel um, i believe we do have a barrel we were given one as a quest reward uh, in the last stream and then uh, if we just craft that up with the eight coal, like so, we get our dank one. So I believe if we uh, right click this, we have by default nine slots. And I believe we can place things into these nine slots like andesite cobblestone and all the other kinds of cobblestone that we don't want. And if we turn on the pickup button, we have normal pickup, pickup all, filtered pickup and void pickup. So I think normally, let me test this. If we put on normal pickup, does it, automatically send the items we pick up into the null. It doesn't. So with it turned to none, we pick up cobblestone as per usual. However, if we set it to pick up all, I believe that's gonna pick up, like when we pick up anything that's filtered in here, that stuff should go directly into the dank one. So now there's three andesite cobblestone in there because the two we picked up automatically went in. And if we press shift on this, you can see that right now it has a stack limit of 256. So we can hold up to 256 andesite in this one slot here uh, before it starts to overflow. And I believe at that point, we can also turn on void pickup. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the void pickup will allow us to pick up the andesite, store it in here, 
And then once we get to 256, once this fills, anything over that will just be deleted automatically. So once we fill up on 256 andesite cobblestone in the dank one, any more andesite cobblestone that we would have picked up will just be deleted, which I think is potentially worth it, especially with some of this uh, <laughs> garbage, like the Gabra cobblestone, which we might need at some point in the future, but for now I think is, uh, is somewhat uh, unnecessary. And in general, I think we probably want to just add all of these uh, different cobblestone variants to this filter. Obviously, stuff like ores, we actually want. We want to keep the ores, you know, iron, zinc, copper, lead, silver, tin, etc. But I think a lot of the cobblestone stuff can probably be uh, be filtered away. And just in general, this should help keep our inventory a lot clearer as we dig out more of a space down here for our new blood altar. Chat is also pointing out, as a reward here, we do get a magnet charm which uh, once again, we can stick into uh, our slot with the uh, gluttony charm. And so now we can pick up items uh, and XP that are five blocks away when activated. So right now I don't think it's activated. Let me go and grab that. Do I have to like shift right click to activate it? I do. And then once it's activated, if we put it away, now if, uh, if something is dropped further away, for example, over there, I believe we're gonna automatically pick that up and have it sent to our inventory. Nice. All right, so not too long later, and we now have this uh, new underground hole for our blood altar. Right now, it's a tier two altar. We are about to upgrade it to tier three. And as we mentioned earlier, the idea here is that we're going to use our vector plates to push our spawner, uh, our zombies, to that hole right there. That hole then leads all the way down directly to the top of our blood altar. We've built uh, a little bit of a shaft here using stone blocks and stone slabs. So the zombies should land directly here on top of the altar, at which point we can then hit them with the Dagger of Sacrifice, instantly killing them and turning them into LP for us to use. We do now have all of the runes required, and I've even dug out the holes here for where they need to go for the tier three altar. So we can throw all of these down, including our speed runes, like so. And then again, uh, we also need to put down stone bricks. I believe these go here, here, here and here and then i believe the glowstone goes on top of that although i'm going to check the book real quick because i don't want to waste my glowstone if that's not the case yeah this is correct so in the corners you have the stone brick and then atop that stone brick is the glowstone so one two three and four and now if we look at the center uh, in the top left there you can see that we have a tier three blood altar nice so for now, let's head on back up. Hopefully we have more sugar cane. We do. These have been growing nicely while we've been digging away. Of course, we can go and throw those in over here to get even more sugar. Uh, we also do need to get, if we look at the recipe for vector plates here, we need to get some black dye in order to make the blank plates. Uh, thankfully, we can get black dye by grinding down coal. So if we take... Let's say 12 coal for now, drop that in. That should grind down quite nicely into some black dye, at which point we can then craft that uh, with stone to get the blank plates. 24, by the way, is going to be more than enough. So we only need to make one set of uh, blank plates. And then at that point, uh, we just need three slime balls and six sugar, all of which we have. Uh, 12 coal there may have been a little excessive in, in hindsight. Uh, we only need six after all, but boom, that is done. And then we'll do this along with uh, three slime in the middle and then the sugar either side, that gets us all of the vector plates. You can upgrade these to higher tier vector plates, um, and in fairness, it's not really that expensive to upgrade it, but the area that we are covering is so small, uh, and the zombies are gonna move so quickly anyway that it's really not worth investing in uh, in higher tier vector plates at this moment in time. So uh, by default, these do move you, the player, as well. Uh, the way you avoid that is by holding left shift, as it says uh, on the screen very handily. That's new, I didn't. Uh, that didn't used to be a thing. But uh, now, if you hold shift, you uh, do not get pushed while you're on the vector plate. Uh, I do want to make sure this one here points forward because we want all of the vector plates to push towards that one block right there. This one can go this way. These can go down. Um, I actually hate the fact that that's not symmetrical, so I'm going to quickly change those and we're going to do something like this instead. And there we go. So now, if we uh, fill in the hole that we just made in our wall, we should be able to turn the spawner back on. And as the zombies spawn in, we should see them all pushed together into the one hole, which should then drop them down onto the altar for us to kill them with the dagger. So there we go. Zombie gets dropped down. 
And then once he's down here, we can turn him into LP. Nice. So now, in the quest book here, if we're going to get lava, we have to first complete uh, this quest here, which wants us to get four ritual stones, one master ritual stone, and one weak activation crystal. So the four ritual stones uh, are thankfully made in sets of four. Uh, we need four blank slates, four reinforced slates, and then one orb. It does look like we are going to have to get a higher tier of orb here uh, because we either need a magician's, an apprentice, or a master's. Uh, I believe magician's is the uh, apprentice is the next tier. It is. So we are going to have to get a block of redstone and 5,000 LP in order to get that, uh, that next tier. Uh, once again, because we picked up and broke the altar, it's now refilling that buffer. So as with the first time we placed it down, uh, the first few hundred LP that we uh, put into the altar are going to look like they disappear uh, into the buffer, but that's perfectly normal. Uh, for the Master Ritual Stone, we need another four Ritual Stones uh, with four blank slates, and again, another high tier orb. Again, much like the previous tier of orb, but it's not used up in the craft, so we do get to use that over and over again. And then finally, we need a weak activation crystal, which is made in a tier three blood altar with 10,000 LP. Uh, and this can either be done with a lava crystal, uh, or for us, we're gonna use a seared melter, which we did make at the beginning of the pack. And if we have five glass, we should hopefully, oh, look at that, we got 50 plus glass. Uh, in fact, we probably had that right at the start of the stream now that I think about it, but uh, we should be able to very easily do uh, one, two, three, four, five with four seared brick and then five of these, that gets us a seared melter. And so basically now all we need to do uh, is get a block of redstone, which we don't have. And I'm going to assume that uh, we can get more redstone, yeah, by crushing it as opposed to by uh, placing and breaking it. But uh, as soon as we have a block of redstone, really chat, all we have to do is um, run a bunch of stuff through the blood altar. We need to get a bunch of stone. And so again, it's probably worth uh, beginning to smelt up even more stone than what we already have. Um, because we're going to have to make a bunch of blank slates. The higher tier slates, by the way, the ones that we do need to make uh, in order to get this ritual stone, uh, the reinforced slates, are just made by leaving the blank slates in the blood altar. So a regular blank slate is stone and 1000 LP. To make a reinforced slate, it's a blank slate and 2000 LP. So basically, if you leave a piece of stone in long enough in a tier two altar, it will eventually turn into a reinforced slate because as soon as the blank slate is made, it will begin turning into a reinforced slate. And then it even goes further. If you leave a reinforced slate in a tier three altar, it will eventually turn into an imbued slate. And then if you leave an imbued slate into a tier four altar, demonic slate, and it goes on and on and on as you move up through the, uh, through the tiers of slate. For now though, we only need the first two. So let's get a block of redstone and let's first see if we can't get 5,000 life points into this block of redstone. So there is our apprentice blood orb, uh, which kind of fully replaces the other uh, weak blood orb that's kind of uh, unnecessary uh, now because it's just a worse version of the uh, the apprentice blood orb. Uh, people have pointed out in the Twitch chat here uh, that we are going to run into a little bit of a problem. And that problem is that in order to craft the master ritual stone, you either need a master blood orb or a magician's blood orb. Um, I believe the magician's blood orb is the next tier up after Apprentice, it is. And to make this, we need a tier three altar with 25,000 LP in it, which is gonna be a problem because right now our blood altar can only hold 10,000 millibuckets of LP. So we need 2.5X more, uh, which is gonna take quite a few runes of capacity. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, each rune of capacity adds uh, 2,000 LP of capacity to the, uh, to the orb there. So we're gonna have to make eight of those uh, runes of capacity in order to get 16,000 millibuckets more capacity in order to take us up to 26,000 millibuckets, which would allow us to actually get this going. Uh, and the runes of capacity um, are not super expensive, but they're also not super cheap either. We're going to need uh, 24 buckets, uh, which multiplied by three is like 72 iron, which is quite a bit of iron. We're also going to need eight imbued slates. That's eight tier three slates, um, as well as a bunch of stone and a bunch of blank runes. So I think what we're probably going to do, Chen, is we're probably going to wrap things up there for today. What I'll do between streams is I'll go ahead and do yet more mining because I actually just don't think we have the iron available right now. Um, over here, we've got no iron because it's all been smelted over here somewhere. We've got like seven iron there. We've got 10 iron, I think, total. So uh, we are going to have to do a bit more mining between streams. We have 12 here that we could turn into maybe like 20 ingots. But um, even then, that wouldn't take us anywhere near the 72 that we're going to need. 
So between streams, I'll do some more mining. Um, I'll probably also do a fair bit of slate making between streams. So I'll just kind of stand around, you know, hit the zombies, put the stone in, take the stone out, uh, just so we have those slates ready to go. Because, you know, after you've seen it once or twice, it can be a little tedious uh, watching me just kill these zombies over and over again, and then put the stone in, and then wait for the stone to turn into a slate, and then take the slate out, and then repeat the process over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, so I might do a bit of slate making between streams as well. And then uh, after that, we should be able to make lava once we have lava we can get obsidian once we have obsidian we can head through to the nether and get nether quartz at which point uh, we can actually start to invest in a simple storage network which is definitely something i would like to work on in the next stream uh, because this is going to make uh, our storage life just so much easier uh, we don't have to worry about having all of our stuff split amongst multiple different chests or anything like that uh, one thing people are recommending that i do before we wrap up is get an unlimited water source i think that is a very sensible idea we can drop all four in here and boom, we get our second bucket of water. And at that point, uh, we can now, if we wanted to, uh, get more sned. And we could use that sned to, uh, to create a larger infinite water source. Like this. And there we go. So now we don't have to worry about uh, getting more water using the mixer in the future. Uh, but for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.